So we've got a little bit of a beast here for you today. We've got the Sony HDR V1E for the HNCs. And as you can see, it's a little bit bulky. <laughs> this is a little bit of an older camera, but the quality of output that you can get is quite nice. In this video, I'm not gonna go over every single button as it is enormous. The amount of buttons that's in this thing is crazy. But I will go over the essentials for you to know, and I'll also go over how to set it up, okay? As you need to make sure that your monitor system and your record system matches the settings in the camera properly for it to work. So I'll go over all that with you in this video. But first, let me just go over the absolute basics of this camera. So this is essentially your full V1E kit, okay? You get your microphone, your, your little microphone muffler, the camera itself, a battery, HDMI cable, this little attachment for the Ninja. You should also get a battery for the Ninja as well. The, the camera and the Ninja both take the same type of battery. Just a two pin battery. First of all, the battery goes in the back. With the pins facing down, just insert and slide down till we hear a little click. To bring the battery back out, don't just yank it out. You've got a little hidden button in here that says battery release. If you press and hold that and lift the battery up, that releases it, okay? We'll keep the battery in for now. All right. So let's assemble the rest of this. As you've probably seen in the introduction, it looks a little bit of a mess. That's just because of the length of these cables. But the other way of doing it is to record it via cassette player, but nah, not into that. Just use this guy and save yourself a whole lot of hassle. Keep it digital, okay? Don't go analog. All right, so what I usually do is I put my HDMI through the handlebar of the camera. And what I do is I just wrap it up a few times. So maybe about three, three turns, three or four turns, okay? And the HDMI, there's a little flap down here that you can get it out. The HDMI goes right in there. So get your HDMI, make sure it's the right way about. Plug that in. Well, before you plug it in, actually, you want to make sure this is out as well. Make sure your monitor's out and plug this in. A little tip for you as well. Keep your cabling as far back as possible. Because you've also got some set, like a zoom setting up here and a record function that we're not going to use because that's if you're recording to tape. But you still get this handy zoom function. Next, we just attach this little guy by sliding it into this port and you screw it in there. Once you screw it in, you tighten it by rotating the full unit until it stops. And to release it, you do the opposite. So you unscrew first and then you unscrew the little notch down there. Lastly, you get your Atmos. Make sure it's the right way up, because this can go two ways, as there's a thread there and a thread there. Make sure it's the right way up. And what you just do, you thread this in as well. So once that is secure, Adjust this however you want it. I'm going to have it facing myself. And once it's adjusted, just tighten this notch and it's secure. To add the microphone on if you want the microphone, loosen this little notch here to give that some play. Slide your microphone in, put your little foam over it, and Plug in your XLR into input 1 to the right hand side. Alright, until you hear a click and it doesn't move. That's it, it's plugged in. So now that our microphone is plugged in, you just want to tighten it down as well. Finally, we just want to plug this in to our Atmos Ninja. You'll see that there's two HDMI ports here. Maybe a bit hard to see, so you're a bit far away, but you've got two ports here. You've got one in and one out. 
The one at the top is in. Or is that with the arrow pointing inwards? Okay. The arrow pointing outwards, that's for output. Alright, so you wanted to go in. She wanted to go into this to record. I guess the other, th the other thing to make sure as well with the Atmos is take out your SSD and make sure you've got some ports there to make sure there's actually an SSD inside the casing. Sometimes the SSDs aren't inside the casing. I think that's the case for one of the Atmos kits. But yeah, just make sure that's there, okay? And that's the assembly of your unit. You're good to start recording at this point. If you try and keep the knowledge of your DSLR cameras in mind, you'll be able to figure this out. So, back here is most of your camera operation setting, okay? This is your on, off, record sort of functions. This here is your settings adjustments, so this is where you get your shutter speeds, your menu, and your little scroll for when you're in the menu to adjust the menu settings. And here's where I've just got some other ports in there. Round here, hidden behind this, this little screen, you've got some playback options and also some little record options. We're not going to worry about most of this, um, as this applies to the tape. So we'll just bring this back here. You've also got some focus buttons here. You've got expand the focus and focus. If you press focus, that'll make the camera focus for you. Expand the focus, zooms in a little bit to see, to make sure if you're in focus. That's ND filter actually adjusts the, um, it puts an ND filter on the lens for you. So if you find things are a little bit too bright, even with your ISO appropriately um, set, apply this and this will dull everything a little bit for you. So you get your iris exposure there. Uh, again, I'm not going to go over all of this because it would take forever to get into detail about it all, okay? So anyway, the other thing to take note of as well, if you're actually going to record audio here and plan on using it, this is your audio station up here. These microphones are usually condenser microphones, which they need 48 volts or phantom power. So make sure that this switch is on. All right, that's off. Make sure it's on. And this is your gain for that microphone. This is channel one and that's channel two. So around here, you've got three options. You get VCR, you get power on and off, and you've got no sorry, you've got VCR, you get power off and power on essentially. The only ones that we need to worry about is power on and power off. So to power it on, you switch this dial to the left. To power it off, you bring the dial into the center. That's maybe a little bit hard to see here. Power it on and power it off. You'll see in the middle as well, you get a little record button. Again, that record button is if you're using this tape recorder, which we are not. So we're just going to power it on now. We are also going to power on our Zoom, uh, our Zoom, <laughs> our Atmos, okay? So do that, press this little indent button and just give it a little send and it'll load up. Press and hold it for about three seconds, okay? Usually the very first thing to come up on this camera is a time and date set. Ignore it. To turn it off, you just press the little menu button and find it. That'll automatically turn it off. The reason why we're not seeing anything now is because the short defence is on. There's a little notch here that opens and closes. Your sort of slit a lens cap essentially, it's a built in lens cap, alright. Bring it up to open, and as you'll see there, we've got some footage coming in. But how to use your zoom and how you actually hold the camera is you hold it in there and you use your two fingers to adjust this little guy here. And what I'm doing here. Is I'm pushing it forward to zoom in 
pulling it back to zoom out. That's where you can actually do that up here as well. But up here it does it a little bit softer, a little bit nicer. So if you're wanting to do shots where the camera's lifting up, or some pans, or whatever, and you're wanting to adjust the zoom as well, you can use that and it's a little bit nicer, a little bit slower, a bit more steady. I usually bring this out just so I've got that to monitor and I've got the Atmos here as well as a backup. Um, you can set the Atmos to monitor by hitting MON. That way then you're now monitoring, you've got a lovely view of my t-shirt and you can now monitor what the camera is viewing. Exact same as what's in here. But if I'm doing it this way, I can now adjust this. Someone else can see what I'm filming and I can still see what I'm filming down here. For whatever reason, you do not want to use this and you'd rather use this in here, you close this. All right, I can't do it now because the cable's plugged in, but you would close this over and this little display here will automatically transfer it in there. There is no light sensor in here, so even if I had to cover that up, this still stays on. All right, so to record, it's quite fairly simple. All you have to do is hit the record button that's on this, which is down at the bottom right hand corner if you're in monitor. And you'll see you get a little timer and it's starting to record. There is one little thing that I need to make very clear with this camera. Make sure it's recording fine, alright? Make sure it records over five seconds. If your Atmos and your camera's settings don't match up, it doesn't record. There's only one setting that I've found anyway that it records that, and I'll show you what it is now. What we're just going to do is we're just going to get the menu here, okay? And we're going to use this little scroll, we're going to scroll down to in, out, record. To actually go into this menu, you press in on this little scroll. And make sure your record format is DV, not HDV 1080i. It has to be DV. Select again just to make sure it's selected DV there and press menu to back out. If you're in HDVI 1080, it does not work with the Atmos. And you'll only record five seconds of corrupted edits or corrupted clip scene. Make sure it's in DV. The Atmos should automatically adjust to that. So we'll see up here it's got PAL 16.9. Although that must does adjust. So I've just swapped it to 1080i. All right, and that must does adjust. But if we just watch this here, we get the monitor and we start recording. But we'll record five seconds or four seconds and it will start to repeat. You see that there? And if we go into view this, so if we just go back and if we go into play and if we play, let's just say the second one it's a corrupt footage, alright so just make sure your format is in DV the Ninja automatically adjusts for you and that's really it, you're good to go. So to record, you can either record it there and it's going to record, or you can also monitor and hit record there. So I hope that covers the most essential parts of this camera. This is one that students don't really take out. Um, I don't know if it's because of the bulkiness of it or because they're so adapted to the Canons, but this is a good way to start to get used to proper filming cameras rather than just DSLRs. So, yeah, this is a good sort of essentials guide to this and soon, once you move up to HMD, you'll be able to play with guys like this Panasonic 4K and this 1000E here.